Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning, and thanks for joining us here at Faith in Our Hometown. Uh, one of the things that uh, always should be of concern to any of us here in the greater Joplin area uh, is our health and how we are as people uh, who attend to their health. Uh, of course, some days we talk about our spiritual health, some days we talk about our emotional health, uh, some days we talk about uh, health uh, in all these different ways that we would consider wellness. This morning we're going to talk a little bit about physical health and especially uh, in terms of the way that that's been measured by some of the members of our community. Our guest this morning is Aaron Lewis. Aaron is the, uh, the manager for the Community Benefit Program at Mercy Hospital. There, uh, so thanks for joining us this morning, Aaron. Yeah. Um, we're also, uh, there's, a, there's a Community Benefit Program that also goes on over at Freeman for any not-for-profit hospital. And so we're going to be talking a little bit about what that is this morning and what they have measured, what we know about health here in our community, and how we might be able to improve that just a little bit. So we'll be right back after this Mercy Minute. Thanks for joining us this morning on Faith in Our Hometown. If you are a smoker, um, you need to do anything in your power to try to stop smoking because that's probably the biggest risk factor for lung cancer. Ways to help you have quit smoking um, are either using nicotine patches, nicotine gum, there are other medications that your doctor can prescribe to help you quit smoking such as uh, Wellbutrin or Chantix. Um, there are also smoking cessation programs. We don't know the long-term consequences of e-cigarettes right now, and because of that, they cannot be recommended as a substitute for regular um, cigarettes. At the end of the day, we would like you to be off of all nicotine products if possible. Welcome back. So today we're talking a little bit about our health as a community. And to help us to do that is Aaron Lewis from Mercy Hospital. He is the manager of their Community Benefit Program. So Aaron, tell us first a little bit about yourself and then tell us what in the world is Community Benefit because I didn't know about it a few months ago. And sure. I was fascinated to find out that it existed. So why don't you tell everybody what you and other not-for-profit hospitals have to do as a part of being in the community? Sure. Uh, well. Uh Part of my duty at Mercy is to be the manager of community benefit. Um, I've been with Mercy for a couple years now. Other duties include sports medicine and um, our school-based health clinic that we have in Web City and just kind of manage the clinic side of that. So uh, to answer your question about community benefit, it's, it's a large project that um, health departments, hospitals, clinics, I think all share a duty in. And uh, how we go about finding those needs in the community is, is a big collaborative effort. So with Mercy, our vision, part of our Mercy mission is to serve those that are vulnerable, um, that are underserved, find out how we can make them healthier and um, give them, I guess, better access to health and, and the health that they need. So I know that you know everybody in the community has been trying to study this for a long time, trying to keep their finger on the pulse of what's going on in the community. So how do you all go about that? Because I mean, not just you have to do this, but Freeman Hospital has to do sure. this, and you know, public public health department and all this. Everybody has to kind of put their best minds together to start talking about how do we help the community be healthier. Right. Well, so how do you find that out? Well, what's the first step is obviously just accepting that nobody can do it on their own. So what we've done, I feel a great job of is collaborate, collaborating with other hospitals, other health departments, um, even Springfield Health Department, Springfield mm -hmm. Hospitals. It's kind of been a regional effort um, in this kind of three, four state area. Good. And to begin with, we, we have to uh, get together, meet, collaborate, and find out, okay, how are we going to start this process? Are we going to do a survey? Are we going to um, develop focus groups within the community and just kind of interview uh, community members to to see what they feel if, if they're uninsured if they're in our older population or young population I think it's good to have a good mix of people to uh, kind of interview and, and see what the yeah. needs are. So what you find out, so how did you start to tackle that here in Southwest Missouri? So you get this coalition together, some of the people who are responsible for some of these things. So how'd you get them together and what'd you find out? 
Well, we, uh, we decided to collaborate with the Ozark Health Commission, which basically that's the Springfield Health Department, okay. in collaboration with uh, Cox Health in Springfield, Mercy Health, Freeman, Mercy here in Joplin, and uh, other health departments within both regions. And so like other local smaller hospitals, yep. things like that, Miosho and places like that? Yeah, just kind of we identified community health leaders, mm -hmm. whether it was in Mercy or Freeman or, again, public health. Um, even the mental health side of, of clinics and hospitals, we tried to attract, I guess, the bulk of the leaders in the community to, to develop kind of an action plan of, of where Good. to go next. Good. So what did you guys discover? So through some focus groups and through a survey that we've done, we've, um, we've dis discovered about five um, health needs that, that we'd like to address. And also with that, I guess I, I can't really leave this out. There's a lot of data that's, that's online. Um, and there is, there is data that health departments use to incorporate a lot of information that just, just us, I guess we, we, can't, we can't gather just ourselves or right. just with a focus group. So, um, so I think we put these up on a, on a, on a screen here for you. But uh, this is, uh, these are the five, the five areas that we've discovered. Okay? Yes. So, th so these are the things that are now that we're going to work on in terms of those kinds of things. So cardiovascular disease, lung disease, mental health, diabetes, and cancer. So those are the five yes. presenting needs they are. here in our community. Out of all of our data, our, now when I say primary data and secondary data, that may be a little bit confusing to some, but, but in our world, uh, primary data is basically who comes th through our EDs, right. our emergency departments. Um, what's the demographic of that population? Uh, how many people do we serve in a calendar year? And I, so, so that was taken during the 2014-15 calendar year. So like just anybody that walks in the door and needs health care. Yes. You measure all that stuff and count it all up. The conditions that they had, what illnesses, and, um, and then our secondary data is basically everything other than that. What um, regional uh, geographic information is out there that maybe we lack as communities, whether it's non-for-profit, whether it's even dental care, um, other health needs, those are all combined. Mm -hmm. So we combine those two primary and secondary data and we come up with, um, I guess, maybe a top seven, top eight list of health needs in our community and then from there we score them what's uh, more prevalent than others and at the end of the day what we've decided Freeman Health, uh, our local health departments, Joplin has a community health coalition that, uh, that meets regularly every mm -hmm. month and um, we sat down uh, for an entire afternoon and scored these, these health needs and, and those five are, is, those is five what are we the came, ones up that came up with. Yeah. Okay, so the, the point here then is, is that the hospitals and all of our health providers in the area through some kind of a cooperative effort mm -hmm. are going to try to make sure that we improve in those five areas. Yes. Is that correct? That is correct. And okay. the reason why we do that, especially, I guess, hospitals, is because of the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. We are, um, not that, I guess we weren't before, but per the IRS, per some new regulations, they, they want to hold hospitals accountable for what we do. And part of that is if we identify health needs in the community, how are we going to address them? What's our plan to uh, implement strategies to move the needle, I guess, okay. uh, in, in tackling cardiovascular disease or lung disease? Obviously, those are, these are big issues that, sure. that n I, it's going to take a long time to even try to tackle. But, um, but that's how, do how we, we improve. But how do we improve the situation of health in the community? How do we how do we make the how do we make the the greater area a healthier area in that regard? And that's I, what you're trying to do. That's what we're trying to do. Net, I mean, the assessment that we're working on has identified those needs. Now, it's working on a health improvement plan. Okay. So so with that, whether it's Freeman or Mercy or health departments, um, we have to do this assessment every three years per the Affordable Care Act, per some regulations, and in this health improvement plan. This is how we're going to begin to lay out our, um, I guess, game plan to tackle those. So that's in a process that we're getting ready to jump into. We haven't yet begun the, the community health improvement plan, right. but I think a big part of, of 
how we start that process is education. Sure. Once we get our health needs assessment finalized, um, then both hospitals, I think Freeman already has theirs posted, we will, we will post that, make it available to the public, um, answer any questions there may be about mm -hmm. those, those five, five needs, sure. and, then, and then go from there. And then uh, later in the fall, we'll, uh, we'll have that health improvement plan ready. And just to clarify, I mean, these are not obviously the only five health needs oh, here sure. in the area. I mean, I'm sure there were plenty of others on the list. These yeah. are just the ones that kind of floated to the top in terms of our, our biggest challenges at this point in time. Correct. And I would also guess that the other thing there is, is that, um, you know, it's again, to say to everybody's credit, it's, it's not like nobody's been working on these five things uh, for the last number of years. It's just that right now, uh, you know, there's kind of like a little bit more accountability that's, that, that's been required because of the change of legislation and change in the laws. Right. that says, okay, now you gotta do this. So yeah. I mean, I know, I, you know, I've been in this community a long time. I've seen some of Freeman's outreach, you know, in terms of just trying to do community education. I've seen the same thing for Mercy. Yep. I mean, I've seen those things. I've seen, you know, I've worked with, uh, you know, folks in the health department, those things, you know, when they're trying to improve our lot in life. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an important thing. So it's not that nothing's been done, right? but it's just that now there's this extra little piece that we're kind of required to, kind of report on, if you will, yep. that shows, okay, this is what we settled on, we studied the stuff, here's the thing, and now, so we've already, we've done the assessment. Right. All right, and so now that we've had these five issues and they're on the, they've come, they've floated to the top, now the key is gonna be what do we do with those, with those five things, and how can we, as you said, move the needle, which basically means, how do we, how are we gonna measure, <laughs> yeah. good luck with this, yeah. how are we gonna measure five years from now, um, whether or not we've made an improvement on the cardiovascular health of the community. How are we gonna, how are we gonna tell whether we've made an improvement in lung disease? Th that is um, a process that I think we as, at Mercy, I guess we have a process to track all our community benefit activity, whether okay. that's volunteering, whether it's charity care, or uh, in-kind donations to certain organizations, sponsorships. We, we have it at, a way to track that activity. Okay. So if we do a good enough job of tracking that activity each year, and again this is due again in another three years, hopefully by by tracking that activity we'll know um, what we've done as an institution or, or a hospital to to meet those community needs or at least say hey this is what we've done the past three years to address child obesity or smoking cessation or whatever it may be that may lead to lung disease or cardi cardiovascular right. disease um, what are the programs that we do in our, our diabetes bridge program what are the the mental health um, I guess goals that we want to achieve in the next three years how how do we improve access to those underserved people and Again, if we do enough, a good enough job of tracking all that information, I mm -hmm. think we can have a really good story to tell at those three years and say, hey, here's what we've done as a community to try to, try to tackle these issues. We, we've, we've, we've had X amount of education opportunities to uh, young adults or yeah. children or whatever it may be. Well, and the best part is, is that you're doing it as a larger part of a larger coalition. So that yes. you've got, you know, you're not in this by yourself. So in other right. words, Mercy's not just trying to do this by themselves, so the health department's not trying to do it by itself, or Freeman's not trying to do it by itself, but we're all trying to figure out how to do that together. Well, we're gonna come back, and when we come back, I wanna do a little bit uh, you know, more concrete about that, uh, you know, talk about how we'll do that. But um, this is, we're gonna be right back. Uh, this is Faith in Our Hometown. Don't go away, stay with us. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN-TV, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. Well, welcome back. I'm here with Aaron Lewis, uh, who is the manager for Mercy's Community Benefit, which we've been talking about as a program by which all the health care providers, all the people who care about our health, have kind of come together and put their heads together to figure out, okay, first of all, what are our major needs? Uh, you scored all those in the five that came to the top. 
Uh, you, we, were, we were talking right before the break about uh, your diabetes bridge program. So let's just let, let's go with diabetes, okay? Yeah. So let's give let's get concrete in terms of the examples. What might Mercy or what might the larger community do? And I know this isn't a formalized plan yet because sure. you haven't figured out the plan yet. But, sure. but what might be some of the steps that you all might do to try to move that needle, as you said, or, or, or make sure that we've got better diabetic health in this community? I think what uh, Dr. Gretchen Scholl, who's, who's our endocrinologist at Mercy, I think does a great job of already starting that process. Um, she has nurse educators, uh, nutritionists on staff that do a great job of educating those patients that come in um, and, and identify those that, that may have a trouble, that may have trouble uh, maybe managing their, their diabetes. Mm -hmm and what can Mercy do to help them along that process. Mm -hmm. So as a community, what are the, what can we latch on to, I guess, that maybe Dr. Scholl does or maybe another provider that does? Yeah, that, Some, yeah. somebody in Springfield's right. got this great program or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Sure, what can we latch on to that um, we can take from and then educate our community on and say, hey, here's the, the services that, that are offered in your community um, here's how you can access that, and um, I get re really just kind of funnel them to the r to the right to resources. The right yeah. Well, so like, so we talked about. I mean, obviously, we talked earlier about care. People just walking in the door, needing something, and so somebody finds out they're diabetic. Okay. Well, you suddenly then, you know, they've had some presenting issues. Suddenly yep. find out that they're diabetic. All right. Um, I'm sure probably. You know, you, now you've mentioned education, mm -hmm. okay? So education, again, is a very important part. I mean, I learn stuff all the time. I've been, t I've been diabetic for, what, 16 years now. Okay. You know, I'm yeah. very well controlled. Don't, don't worry about me. I'm, <laughs> I'm okay. My doctor thinks he's brilliant, okay? But, um, the, um, but I mean, you know, uh, so education, I'm still learning stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, after all this time, I mean, I, I'm still continuing to figure out you know, more efficient, more efficient, and better ways of taking care of myself sure. in that regard. So, you know, diagnosis, care, education. What else? Um, I guess n foods, nutrition, right. um, access to medications. What are the the correct medications you're supposed to have as a mm -hmm. diabetic? What What are the things that you can and can't do on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. And when you do get in trouble with your blood sugar, what What are the I don't want to say easy fixes, but what are the things that you can remember easily to get you back on track. Right. Um, I think though that's some key information that the community needs to know, and it's I think it's imperative not only that they have maybe an endocrinologist that they work with, but a primary care physician sure. that they can see on a regular basis, right. and and not be referred in as an inpatient right. person to the hospital. You know, I know my I know my primary physician and my uh, you know and my endocrinologist. You know, have come. You know, they. You know, they're both checking, yeah. seeing the counter, checking and counterbalancing each other all the time, just making sure that everything's working the way that it's supposed to be working. Right. Um, one of the things that I, we've also not talked about yet is screening, because I mean that's going to be a major yep. issue too. Because I mean, yep. mine was cut very early for that. You know, for that re I was yep. working at a, you know a state university and. Boom, they were getting ready to all have their health fair, and all of a sudden, you know, I said, Well, you haven't had your blood checked in a while. Why don't you come get your blood check? Fine, go do that. So, for my 39th birthday, woohoo, you know, we find out that suddenly I've got high blood sugar. Yeah. And we'd known, we'd done some tests, you know, a year or two before, so we knew we caught it very early. Sure. But I mean, I'm grateful that I caught it early as opposed to somebody who's not been to the doctor in mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. You know, all kinds of damage gets done. And right. then it's a lot harder to, to manage it all yeah. when those kinds of things happen. So, those are, those are all important things. Anything we're missing in terms of some of that? I mean, that's just one of the issues. Well, that's just one of them, but I think listening to you, I, when you talk about health fairs and kind of outreach clinics, that's, that's where community benefit comes into, into play, is to make sure that we as, a, we as a hospital put on health fairs so we can screen folks for examples just like yours. Whether it's, again, whether it's high cholesterol, do blood screenings, or uh, if we find that somebody might might have high blood sugar. Those are the important things that community benefit um, individuals and community need to keep track of and need to keep doing in the community. And those are the easy things that we can track. We served X amount of people at this this health fair and then we can we can go back and track that from year to year 
and, and, and see, are we seeing the same number of people with X diagnosis? Yeah. So I think that's a great point. I mean, that ties right in with um, what community benefit leaders in this area, whether it's a public health official or uh, just a, your, your easy access clinic in the community sure. should do. Well, I mean, again, it's all of us working together. So, I mean, yeah. like, for example, faith-based organizations, we need to get our seniors together and we need to make sure that, you know, that they're, they're you know, getting their screenings, yeah. you know, and, and making sure that we're supporting them in ways that are going to be helpful to them. Because again, we want our members healthy. Right. Uh, you know, we, we, you know, and, and it's, it's not just, you know, because we want to keep them going or we want to make sure we, they don't, you know, keep putting stuff in the collection basket. That's not the sure. point. The point is, <laughs> is, is just making sure that when everybody is healthy, um, you know, just from a holistic standpoint, I mean, you know, let's think about any wellness model we've ever seen. Spirituality is always a part of that. Right. But so is the physical, so is the mm -hmm. physical self, so is the emotional self, so is all those things. Yeah. All those are pieces of wellness. And if, if one of those is suffering, it won't be long before, you know, those things happen. I was talking right. to some friends the other night and their son is, you know, 30 and is already on disability because of his diabetes. And, you know, and I'm saying prayers of Thanksgiving that mine is so well managed, sure. okay, but, sure. um, you know, but when I, when I think about how difficult that's been for them, and, and if his, if he, it, they just say if it, you know, they, they gotta keep him from getting depressed, because if he gets depressed, suddenly his numbers start going wacko again, yeah. you know, in terms of, the, you know, his, his measurements of his blood sugars, and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, that's awful, you yeah. know, and I, when I stop and I see what, you know, somebody like that's gotta go through, and I know he's not yeah. the only one, I know there's tons of people in the community, yeah. You know, um, and you know, and I've got good insurance, so I mean, I'm right. well cared for. I mean, I, it pays for both of my physicians to do what they're doing. Yeah. But what about again the people without? And how do we get to them? And mm -hmm. how do we help them before things get bad? Yeah. Uh, you know, all that's just a big, uh, and, I, and I think it's a. I'm going to say this too. I mean, it's also one of those things that's I think incumbent upon us who are members of faith communities to see that that's part of. God's desire for wholeness. Sure. You know, and I don't think uh, any of our guests from whatever religious tradition we're talking about would, right. would attest to that. Yeah. But that's part of attending to what God wants us to be paying attention to, too. Definitely. You know? Definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, I, and I'm not, you know, I know, uh, you know I've got, I got mercy over a barrel. If you guys don't keep the God thing in there, I, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> yeah, I okay? don't think we have a choice. I know you don't. You don't have a choice. It was Catholic <laughs> health care. But, but I mean, the others, I'm not going to say, I mean, you know, again, you know, Freeman, you know, hires chaplains and people to take care of the spiritual welfare of their patients yeah. and the people who come through. Uh, you know, the, you know, the health department would, you know, would even, you know, probably I'm sure encourage people who need that spiritual support and want that to go out and figure out where they're going to find it. Mm -hmm. And as parishes and churches and communities, we need to be doing some of that stuff too. Yeah. Just saying, how are we going to care for folks? So, you know, again, in that en endeavor, you know, you guys have got to be talking to us too, so yeah. that we can help you to get your people for your screenings and things like that. Mm -hmm. What else can we do to help? What what could what could what could the faith communities there do to help? You know, uh, you know this this community benefit help to care of the community. What could we do? I think it's uh, being a part of local health collaboratives like the one that that we have. Um, that uh, it's a second Friday of every every month that we have in Joplin. Um, there there are other not for profit kind of Joplin community resources uh, committees. One Joplin is uh, is kind of a new endeavor for Joplin that that takes care. Well, I say take care. Tries to again move the needle on health, poverty, human services, anything like that. I think being a part of the table in these discussions is is the best way to do that because if that seat isn't filled, then then we don't know what your your thoughts are or what you think or, or maybe better needs than, than, than what we do as far as the spiritual side or um, maybe the health issues that you might see through your parishes or, or congregations. Right, well, and you know, sometimes we're just, you know, we're in the trenches to see some of it when people's health starts to slip. Sure. You know, and so sometimes that might be a, you know, a way that we can kind of do that as, as communities of faith to try to make sure that, you know, we're not letting any of our folks fall through the cracks. I know some churches will go to the extent of saying, you know, if they, uh, especially it's easier in the smaller churches, the bigger ones, this is tough. Yeah. But I mean, the smaller the community, the better off in some ways they are knowing what their members are up to. Mm -hmm. And so if that person's not there on a Sunday morning, 
You know, we said, where's so and so? Yeah. You know, where, where, well, why aren't they here this morning? Has anybody heard from them? And that's especially true of our elderly and those things. So I, I just really, I know that that works for especially smaller congregations. Yeah. Um, and in know. this community, everybody knows, tends to know everybody else or has a connection to somebody that could help as well or provide another service. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, you know, I, I, the longer we do uh, the show and we start having these conversations, uh, I'm kind of amazed at, you know, at, again, the different ways that, that our efforts crisscross mm -hmm. and find ways to support each other in terms of what we're doing. Um, you know, in terms of that, is there anything else you'd like to ask of the churches other than just for us to pay a little more attention? Keep our feelers out? Keep your feelers out, be involved, uh, share your voice. Okay. However that may be, whether it's social media or coming to meetings or, or uh, coming to the hospitals and, and, um, and sharing what you would like to do in the community. Because what I think clinics and hospitals, what I think we love to do is be part of the community and sponsor different things and um, uh, be a part of, again, the holistic approach to health, uh, community health, and how we can have a better community, not just transportation or not just education there's other there's a whole lot of other things that um, communities good. can good. get involved in well we're going to be right back after this mercy minute to wrap up thanks for being with us this morning Aaron you bet yeah I think it's important to see the plastic surgeon beforehand so that way you know what the options are in terms of reconstruction whether it's one breast or both breasts or whether if they opt for what's called conservative therapy if you have a lumpectomy um, and radiation what are your options after that so I think it just empowers women to have more information to decide what's the best decision for them moving forward and some of the pluses about immediate reconstruction are that you, for the most part, have one less surgery. Uh, and also, psychologically, a lot of women just love knowing that they've already started the healing process. Well, again, thanks for joining us this morning for Faith in Our Hometown. Uh, sometimes uh, we need to remember that faith is not just about the stuff that we do in church, but it goes into all the pieces of our lives. Uh, healing, health, wellness, those are all important things for us because most of us who believe in a God would say that that would be part of what God's plan is, and especially when we're working in harmony with what God has in plan for us, that we should seek for wellness. We should seek for those things. Uh, one of the things that we're sometimes not aware of is that even our, our public hospitals, our, those that may not have a faith affiliation, our own health department, all of them are working toward that same thing. And I think it's important for us to remember that we're all in that together. Um, uh, we, we do have a, a responsibility, and it's great that, that places like Mercy and Freeman and all those places that now have an obligation because of the law, well, they're doing it be the same way that they've always done it. So, in so many ways, uh, this is nothing new, but we're kind of reframing it in, in a special way. We do need to care about each other. We need to care about our health. Uh, this is Faith in Our Hometown. We hope that you'll join us again next week for another discussion. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.